Hey, thanks for stopping by. This video is going to be a reaction to the Business Insiders, what new Marines go through in boot camp. Uh, I saw it pop up in my feed at one point. Uh, I'm an honorably discharged Marine, got out in 93, and uh, I didn't even watch it yet. I just saw that drill instructor in the yellow shirt up at that boy's grill, so it made me think, let's do the reaction video, so, so let's do it. You know, that young uh, drill instructor right there, the yellow shirt. The guy in the gas chamber, that's just classic. And everybody sounds that way with their gas mask on. It's just one of those things. You sound like uh, you've seen better days at the gas chamber. This is Marine Corps Boot Camp in Paris Island, South Carolina. Before they become United States Marines, all recruits... The repelling wall is fun. It's one of those Marine things you think you're not going to make it, but you uh, basic training program, can do it. ...which tests them physically and psychologically. No, I feel sorry for you! Hey. It's a pressure cooker for 12 weeks. Under the pressure... Of, I had some good uh, buddies that were DIs and, uh, you, the scrutiny of attention to detail you know, part of it, day, if you've been, Semper Fi for going, Semper Fi, good luck, buddy. Uh, you always I mean, see these guys... Sucks. I was there in the summer. You'll never see them sweating. You can't figure out until you talk to drill instructors downstream and realize they're putting uh, spray on stuff on their uniforms like uh, Scotch Guard or switch uniforms out. So those guys are always squared away, never look like they broke a sweat. Like when you just saw a drill there. You think you're wiped. Those guys are running in circles, just wearing you out for, you know, no money. Young sergeants and staff sergeants. So we never arrived when I was in. We did not arrive in the day. We came from Charleston. Came Charleston on a bus. We're there in the middle of the night for those hatches. Symbolizing the threshold between the outside world and Paris Island. I don't really remember what they said at that point. We walked through the hatches and sit there. If you walk into this room, the seats are all metal, right? You do get that envelope. Inside, and they put your platoon number on your, process at least when I was there, on your uh, top of your hand. Yes, and we didn't come with WMs. Maybe there was WMs there, but that night I got there, there was no WMs. Women Marines, so. After graduation, um, Marines but again, we were there in the middle of the night, and it was about a 30 hours of no sleep, so we were exhausted. Upon entering the Corps, an entry-level private will earn around $20,000 a and year. And we did not have the telephone call thing. We wrote a letter. Um, which is better, I think. I don't know if I want to make phone calls. I wrote a letter. I want to say it's after processing haircut, all the gear you get, all the paperwork and nonsense. I think that night, you get there in the middle of the night, that day, I can't even remember. It's a couple of days you didn't sleep, but that night, I believe, they said write a, write a letter. I don't remember what you we wrote. There was no script that I recall. But there was no phone calls at all. Recruits are given three chances to get someone on the line. Sir, my recruit's not answering, sir. I think the phone calls would make it worse because if you actually talk to somebody, they're going to just... You know, at this point, you don't even realize the pain that will ensue if you screw up. I can't even imagine with a camera there. Uh, pain, what I mean, is a quarter deck or just, you know, getting picked on perpetually. And uh, they can make little things just uh, not little anymore. They can make that, what is it, seven pound plus M16 A2 what I was in, feel like it's a hundred pound dumbbell, you know. Yeah, San Diego, it's funny, if you ever go there, you'll see this Hollywood Marines and you'll see right from I-5, you can see MCRD, Par uh, excuse me, San Diego. Um, I'm sure it's equally tough as far as the training, but it's just so bizarre after being at Paris Island, which is totally isolated. You know, the pipes are above ground. Still canteens, I didn't got rid of that, those crappy canteens and drinking warm water until you puke. That's one of the good old uh, ways to get you. They'll make you just hammer water, canteens of water, hold them upside down above your head, and uh, if you really piss them off, you'll... Uh, drink and then drink and, and they'll get you it was a scuzz bus breast races so you're down there or you can bends and thrust to you heave ho that's pretty typical i did not see any wms and we had bwt which is towards the end of boot camp when i was in females comprise under i did not see any women marines and maybe an in doc there was a woman di or something but you were coming back from bwt running states military and i could hear them they were somewhere, but I could hear them because they were chanting, but I couldn't, never saw them. Recruits, uh, recruits before the sun comes up, 
Their typical wake up call is Yeah, and you wake up. The young devil dogs to be, you wake up. You learn very quickly when they're coming. You wake up in advance because you do not want to be last on the line. Intense series of physical uh, challenges. Not nasty. Four, Am I hearing that right? Four three. Yes, sir. Fail. Some recruits arrive in better shape than others. As far as the shape Some concerned, more than being in shape, you know, couch I tell people, and run, may have been collegiate athletes. be able to do pull-ups, leave the gym alone, just do calisthenics, do the stuff they do, dips, pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, run, swim, don't overdo it because you're going to get, if you go in there muscular, I went in there you know, playing sports, at the gym, all that, I lost weight in boot camp and I wasn't a fat guy, I probably lost you know, uh, I don't know, 20 pounds. There's some guys who gain weight because some of those crappy diets, nutritional stuff. But uh, you will get weaker after the first month. So be prepared for that. If you go in there in tip-top shape, you know, feeding yourself, you know, food, like, because you burn so many calories, and you're not, how many times you kicked out a child like this kid right here? Give us the drill instructor. Training program is progressive in nature. And you never see, if you see someone with shiny stuff like this guy here, this uh, lieutenant colonel, you never see officers. Maybe you see the, uh, the company commander, rarely. You don't want to be, you know, you're so sort of scared of the drill instructors, no less an officer. Now, the pelling's outstanding. It's one of those things they tell you exactly what to do. At that point, I think, is maybe halfway through or they're a little bit further. Gets the chance to but repelling, it's motor. You get fired up at that point. Foot tall tower. You, know, you just do it. Recruits must repel down using two different methods. There's people do that. Neither repel tower was hard. They just tell you what to do. If you do it like they tell you, you're fine. If you try to do it your way and ease into it, you're not fine. It's like a bandit. You just gotta rip that joker off when you're like this guy repelling down. I don't want to go down. Uh, Recruits with a phobia of heights. I mean, no one wants to do it. It's every scared of it. Here we go. The gas chamber is the best thing. You hear about it, and there's no uh, preparing for it. So we had these old Vietnam era gas masks. They leaked. You put them on, you don and clear them. They still freaking leak. They were terrible. And they just, you're gonna suck. They want you taking gas, dawn and clear, whatever. You're still nose is coming out. You're puking up water, whatever. You know. Uh, it's just a matter, it's almost like being underwater and needing air and feel like you're going to drown a little bit and get nervous. The same thing in the, in the gas chamber. And they sit there and they're just relentless. And they tell you what to do. Don't take your gas mask off, don't rub your eyes. People need to rub their eyes. You know, it, it, you take that off and the snot bubbles. And those little crystals are in your eyes and you want to rub them. And they, you know, they're with a hose and... Definitely, you thank God for the fresh air. Yeah. It's really nice. Gas chamber is an experience once you're done with it. It's a burning sensation. <laughs> yeah. It does build confidence. It built no confidence in the gears. When I got deployed, I had to bring a gas mask. Because we had Vietnam freaking air gas masks. They all leaked or were terrible and never fit right. I hope this stuff's better now. Now, Pugil Sticks is actually fun. I don't know if they, they used to have an octagon. They had like a little bridge. And like a circle pugil sticks. It's fun. I think your DIs get more fired up than you do. I think they bet on it. No one, you know, being a you know, marine, I know the Joker's bet on it and talk smack about their platoons and who's going to do what because that's just what they do. I mean, these guys go, you know, I don't know how the Marine Corps is in 2019, but, you know, 1990. Here in the Marine Corps, we have a kind of a little. Yeah, you know, there was no going at eighty percent. It was a hundred and ten years. Even it was worse when you're in garrison versus deployment. Now I don't remember red is dead. This thing where the one's red. I mean, that makes sense. Maybe there was something. So anything that you strike with that red tip, nine times or ten. I mean, it's supposed to be bayonet training, right? Pugil sticks. We used to fix bayonets, and I don't know if they'll show it here. Fix bayonets and go after tires and run. It's for Marine Corps. You know. I don't imagine banging that training would be good for anything beyond just training for the sake of training. Pugil sticks is fun. You can't think you're going to play, you know, linebacker tackle guy. That doesn't work. Here we go. Bayonets. I didn't watch this. Bayonet training course is fun. That guy's kind of a wuss. 
Yeah, the hand to hand combat Jeez, stuff they teach, I know it's changed. I think they do some, uh, like, mixed martial arts stuff. But it was good. Um, if you're a lefty, you're kind of jammed because they teach everything right. So they're going to make you do a right hand. And you, you drill down on some of the stuff we see them talking about. It's hard to, I don't see it now, but they expect you to do everything right handed. So if you're lefty, good luck. Especially left footed, whatever. And we had rifle range, there was no ACOGs like this. It was 100, 200, 300, and 500 open sights. And the best thing is, if you can't shoot, right, if you're a deer hunter or scopes, you're probably going to do terrible at <laughs> the range. If you go in knowing nothing, like I didn't know anything about rifles and marksmanship. They have to understand the name. Have to I shot expert because I follow exactly what those uh, exactly instructors tell you, the trigger, and they'll tell you you shoot expert if you follow what they right. say. You know, but it's a mind I'm game because guys go on, you know, unqualified. You, you unqualified. You're not passing what it is to sit rifle range. You're not leaving that, that section. I don't know how many times you can go on unqualified. Now, I don't know if the pool here. The range was after the pool when I went, so the pool was like maybe a month and a half, a month in, maybe a month in. And there's some guys had never who couldn't swim, and these guys are doing this, screaming at them, right? And I felt terrible. I was a good swimmer, and it was tough, man. I don't know if they still have the little fake helicopter that dunks. We'll see. But training at Paris Island isn't all. Yeah, physical. here in the classroom Bruce stuff, also spent long they dim the lights, the man. It was tough. But what may seem like down yeah, they take you out in the pit, you know. Dude, you start falling asleep. It's it's not hot. You're not sweating. You're not getting chewed up by no seams. You got to do bent now. You're doing mountain climbers. Yeah, they say getting slayed. We called it. You know, go to the pit. They say make it rain, throw sand up in the air, roll your face in sand. It's an experience. You're all sweaty, so you know it's all over you. And then you realize, okay, that hurt. So they can make something stupid like push-ups in the plank position. You know, running in place. You know, enough that uh, you don't. Don't want it. About it works very effective, and, and, and they scream like this guy freaking out. It's just I don't know where they continue that, but they do that. Like their whole body gyrates when they scream at people. When they come here, we want to tear them down a little bit, and then we want to bring them back up in, in the mold of what it is to be a United States Marine. The Crucible. So we had BWT, and I think the Crucible. I don't know what it came in. I know the Crucible. I've talked to some friends of mine have retired. Through battalion commanders and stuff, and they said that they think it's pretty valuable. No, because you know, I, like I say, when I was in, we had senior officers, senior NCOs were in Vietnam. So they, there was no politically correct. I mean, they, training was ridiculous. And everybody says, you know, the day after you, you know, the old corps when you were in, right? The sounds of gunfire and shelling are played over loudspeakers. The loudspeakers were there. When we were at BWT. It looks like the same place as the Crucible. Recruits are forced to work. We had similar together. things, you know, carrying ammo cans and you know, man down and shit like that. But this looks like a little bit uh, problem solving. More, it looks more like OCS training. They do a lot of this uh, field craft and uh, what? This is what we saw on the second day. Yeah, BWT. We were exhausted Recruits like that, but um, and irritable. I don't remember it being that big of a deal. There was so much exhaustion. I mean, I never... I hit the rack and fell asleep. There was never a uh, um, problem with sleep. I mean, you're always exhausted. You're just going so much. Low crawl there, you know. Low crawl your rifle and your face dragging on the ground is always fun. You haven't done that, you're missing something. You start thinking, man, like, it's hot, I'm thirsty, my arms haven't felt this bad in my whole life. We're halfway there, come on. You just keep looking at the person to the left and right, and you're like, well, he's doing it. I got to keep going. Yeah, when somebody quits in your platoon, you pay for it. So this guy's saying you look at the left and right of you. That guy quits. Everybody else starts getting the beat down because of that person. You know, not quite like Full Metal Jacket, but it's pretty legit. I mean, you know, they will they realize pretty quickly that there's more uh, peer pressure on somebody. Day before graduation, friends and family. We didn't do that. The night before we graduated, we met our our family. Months. We were dressed in Charlie's, which is like green pants, beige top. We were in camis, and we grad. We were one of the first few classes that graduated. First, we um, was in platoon 1105, so first battalion 
be going full dress blues. I know they switch it up all the time. In that same parade deck, my uncle went to uh, Paris Island uh, finished boot camp there in 1968, so it hasn't changed a bit from talking to my grandmother, exactly the same. And the same, you know, first battalion's on the one side of the parade deck there, and second battalion was on the other side, third was further away. Meanwhile. In the barracks of Lima Company. I'm talking to you. Aye, sir. All these rigors right there? Aye, sir. All that trash, huh? Aye, sir. Brand new recruits diligently square away their racks. Oh, this is fun. Warmly welcomed by their senior. Because you think it's tough in receiving, right? And all of a sudden, you get picked up by your drill instructors. You're sitting like this, right? And they're kind of talking to you, and you're just getting yelled at that point. But as soon as the senior DI leaves, I don't know what's going to happen here, you know, the black belt, not the green belt. I mean, the whole place explodes. What I mean by that is the drill instructors, you know, the junior drill instructors just tear the place apart. It's just chaotic. Matt is screaming. I've never seen something so chaotic. I was a pretty active guy in high school. It was just shocking. This part, you're sitting there going, well, okay, they scream at me, you know. And yelled at, but all of a sudden, right after the senior DI walks out that hatch. Let's see what happens now. We offer you the challenge of a good trade and the opportunity to earn the title. United States Marine. Ah, so perhaps that senior DI leaves. His other three drill instructors basically get online and the whole place is a disaster. So hey, any future Marines, you know, former Marines, uh retired guys, hey put your comments below. Tell me your stories about when you were a Paris Islander. You know, you Hollywood Marines, your stories, because you know, these young Devil Dogs coming up, man. They're going through it, and there's some real hard chargers out there. I'm glad to see that. That's the first time I saw that video, and I uh, really appreciate all the Marine Corps has offered me, and it's going to offer you guys. So, hey, again, put your comments below, like, subscribe, save, whatever you guys think you need, need to do, and hey, thanks for watching.